ideals are possible. So if I take a linearly independent uh, sequence of functions, then I can find a sequence of elements of the ultra, ultra filter such that each one of them is linearly independent, but also if I put them together, it's a linearly independent set. Of course, this is very helpful because then I can define my homeomorphisms on this big independent set any which way I want, in particular the way I want it to split all the, all the sequences. All right, so this is, you can forget it, everything I said so far, just remember sort of roughly this property of selective auto filters. Okay. And, all right, so that was for P-compact, but I don't necessarily want P-compact, I just want counter P-compact. What does that mean? That means I don't need to give a P-limit to every sequence, I just need sufficiently many sequences and give them possibly different periods for different ultra filters. So I will try to do the same construction but with different ultra filters and just some sequences, right? <coughs> so uh, we start with the same uh, countable group topology given by the homeomorphisms on the countable Boolean group. And of course, I, don't, I can't take the ultra power, so I will have to tell you what the big group that I will be constructing is. Well, it's going to be the group of finite subsets of continuum. Okay. And now, how, how, am I going, how, how am I going to do this? I fix a family of sequences for which I promise to have a complete accumulation points. So, I, in order for my group to be comfortably compact, I need this family of sequences to be dense. So that means every infinite subset of the group needs to contain one of these se sequences. Okay? And for technical reasons, I will require that, so, so, so they are indexed, these families, by ordinals between omega and c, that the range of the alpha function is contained in finite subsets of alpha. Right? And so this is one parameter in my construction. And the other parameter in the construction is a sequence equally indexed of ultra filters. So what am I going to do with this? Well, I will be extending the homeo homeomorphisms on the countable group to the big group, just like I did before. Only the role of the equivalence classes of the, of the, the sequence will be given by its index. So if I have a sequence at alpha, I will make sure that the singleton alpha will be the p alpha limit of the alpha sequence. Okay. So this can be done. So if I do it recursively, I will define the homomorph homomorphism on all the singletons, and therefore it has a unique extension to the homomorphism on the whole group. And then I can look at the topology, which is generated, induced by all these extensions of the, the base homomorphisms. Okay? Now, if I started with a, with a dense family, that it doesn't matter which sequence of ultra filters I take, this is always going to be a comfortably compact group. It's going to be a group because uh, it's defined by subgroups. The, the, the <coughs> basic neighborhoods of zero are all the kernels, sub-basic neighborhoods are all the kernels of these homomorphisms. So this is always a group topology. And it's always uh, um, comfortably compact. And now we come to the, the interesting part. So when is this, when does this group topology have the property that it has no convergent sequences? Well, one thing that one should notice is that this construction is locally countable. Meaning if I want to know what happens at one point, well, some, 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 say, singleton alpha, it has this alpha which converges to it from the bottom. Now, for each one of those, it has a sequence which converges from it to the bottom. So if I close it off, I just get a countable set. And if I can control homo homomorphisms on these countable sets, then I can always extend them just by the same procedure with these p alpha limits to the, the global homomorphism. So this proposition essentially characterizes for which, which sequences of ultra filters this uh, 
construction gives a, a group without convergent sequence as well. It just says that locally you can always split uh, sequences by homomorphisms while preserving this fact that the singleton alpha is this abstract p-alpha limit of, this, of, of its corresponding sequence. Well, if I do that, then I may still end up with a group which is not house -torch. But, since I took a dense sequence of functions, the kernel can be only finite, so I can factor by that finite, and then I will have a Hausdorff zero-dimensional comfortably compact group without convergent sequences. All right. So, now, uh, if you remember, for the p-compact case, I needed a selective, or I used a selective ultra filter for it to work. So here I can distribute the work of selective ultra filters among the ultra filters that I have in, in my sequence. So I just want them collectively to do the same work as the selective ultra filter did alone for the p compound case. So what does it mean? So call a family of ultra filters p alpha alpha less than c collectively selective so that. If whenever I take a countable subset and I take sequences of functions, say, into the countable <coughs> Boolean group or into C to less than omega, it doesn't make a difference, which are one to one enumerations of the linearly independent sets, then I can find elements of these ultra filters such that if I union, the, union up all these images over these. Uh, sequences, it is globally, total. all of it is a linearly independent subset of the group. Okay. Well, and it's not surprising that if I have that, then I can define my splitting homomorphisms <coughs> and then I can extend them to, to the whole group and that, that actually gives me what I need. Uh, so, in particular, the existence of a collectively set uh, selective sequence of ultra filter gives me the existence of a comfortably complex subgroup of 2 to the C without non-trivial convergent sequences. So now the question becomes when can I construct this collectively selective sequence of ultra filters? And maybe surprising that the, the answer is very often. So I have two results. So if the reaping number is equal to C, then I can construct them. And if the dominating number is equal to omega 1, or even if just the covering of meager and dominating number coincide, then I can construct them too. So this is, in my opinion, a, a substantial improvement over the previous uh, results. Uh, which essentially talked about MA countable, but it also hints to a model. So if I suppose I have a model where these things fail, so there aren't many. So the I need a model where B is equal to C, say, and C say is omega 2, and R is not C, so R is omega 1. So it's uh, among the standard models there is only the Miller model, which happens to be the model of near coherence of filters. Actually, both constructions that I have for these under these assumptions <coughs> violate near coherence of filters. I need failure of near coherence of filters. So uh, this leads me to my last slide. So uh, it seems to suggest that the problem has something to do with near coherence of filters, or it's maybe just my subconscious leading me because I believe that near coherence of filters should provide negative results. But at least uh, these results that I mentioned uh, give evidence that this is the model to look at. What happens to this assuming new coherence of filters? And the last question is, uh, well, so if we go back to the, the first construction for the p-compact case. Well, I, I, I took the topology which by extending homeomorphisms. There is perhaps a more natural topology. So what do I want? I have this small group. I have these abstract p limits, and I want to turn them into a real p limits in, in this group topology. Right? So there is a more natural way to, to do it. It's just 
take the maximal group topology which has this restriction that all the abstract P limits become P limits. If we could make sure that this group topology is Hausdorff, well, that it gives uh, an example. So uh, uh, this is something that I never really gave much thought to, but uh, I think it's an interesting question whether this can ever be Hausdorff, unlike the one where you split by homomorphisms. Uh, and when that happens, so in particular, can it happen for a non-selective object? And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Depends on what you say the standard ones. So okay. if, if, if you have five standard ones, then it's one of the five. Okay. If you have hundred standard ones, then that's a row. Any other questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker once again.